You be listening to all your favorite rappers, do I even qualify? Fine. Am I a staple when you listen or the hip that you be skipping in your ride? I wanna see who you want, I'ma say something so wrong I'ma make waves, I'ma be freaking your ocean like blonde But I'ma get paid, life is a gamble but I'm here to play You steady amble but I move it up like a pace My music is laced, yeah uh, Why do I doubt myself, make music about myself And fake a bravado like no one can touch me Like who am I kidding, I'm clutching this mic as I go Trying to control, life in a lyric and hopefully someone will show See, I'm vulnerable, me, that's who I want you to know uh, The rap has an expectation, unwritten but just as blatant They want that a fantasy sort of just wanna make music about what I'm facing Our stories are never the same, I take a Pace from the Martis. I'm more than the money. I'm making the beverage I drink. I am a light in the darkness. A light in the darkness. A light in the darkness. More than the money. I'm making the beverage I drink. I am a light in the darkness. Yeah. I am a light in the darkness. Who am I? I. You be listening to all your favorite rappers. Do I even qualify? Fine. Am I a staple when you listen or the hip that you be skipping in your ride? I wanna know where I stand, what are my limits again? Tell me so I can take him at the ceiling and go for the win, yeah. That rhymer, educator, he be conquering, boy. Is it that selfish that I wanna be your favorite? My preface is emphasis to my ascension, I'm destined for Pegasus legend. If I got a friend left to phone, the ranches are already known. I'm never alone, my city puts down for me. Don't need your validation, but tell me you like it. Tell me you like me anyway, you tell me just like that. You wanna hear me when your radio play You liking the words that I use, maybe you like I'm a teacher No VMA, but I'm TMJ cause I grind so hard my teeth hurt That's work, rigorous, bright as the sun in your rigorous You fly like a bee, I'm a pivorous Defy gravity cause I'm limitless with all of these accolades Yeah, you think my salary's largest But I'm more than the money, I'm making a beverage I drink I am a light in the darkness, a light in the darkness I am a light in the darkness More than the money, I'm making a beverage I drink I am a light in the darkness Uh I am a light in the darkness. Who am I? I. You be listening to all your favorite rappers. Do I even qualify? Fine. Am I a staple when you listen? Or the hip that you be skipping in your ride? Ride. Discussion over dinner. This is our home. She got firm when the battle I came to listen to you. That's all that you can just have a fun. Cause I don't want to be a stranger. I can't find the bottom when she gets me all that she can. Don't look at the bottom when she gets me all that she can. Thank you to those who prepared that meal. It was really good. Um, hey, if you have a question for us tonight, or for the panelists, or the, the one guy we got, I can't afford anymore, um, you're welcome to text me. It comes right to my iPad, 209-690-8057. If you're streaming at home and this is live, see, this is what always happens is 
somebody will text me at like midnight tonight thinking that somebody should get an answer when it was like, it's not live anymore. So if you are watching this between 6.30 and 8, please do text us 209-690-8057. I have told our guests tonight that every, every question that gets asked, I will not filter because I want to put him on the hot seat and I want him to sweat. So whatever good questions you have, coming right at him. Our guest tonight is a former state representative representing the 20th district from 2006 to 2016. He's also a former school board member for the LaPorte Community School Corporation. Before his current position, he was also the CEO of TCB Manufacturing, a producer of commercial food and beverage coolers. Since 2019, I believe, He's been the mayor of LaPorte, Indiana. It's an honor to welcome tonight to his first discussion over dinner appearance, Mayor Tom Dermody. Thank you. Great to be here tonight. And since 2020, I've been mayor. Well, I mean, the election was 20, November 2019, right? I just would be f prefer for you to be correct. OK. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm I, setting I, the stage <laughs> early with here, me. Here, this is the great thing is, uh, you know, I'm hosting the radio show now that Tom's on once a month unless he cancels on me um, at the last minute. But um, no, he didn't really do that. Um, but uh, I get called, I've gotten called now the fake news media. And, um, and I'm like, literally, I ask questions and the people answer the question, like, you know, the guests answer. So if I'm fake news, what does that make them? Um, so I don't know what you are, Tom, but you're below me. I'm thing. a lot of things, depends who you ask. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, can I say hello and thank you to my lovely bride, Jackie? Wave, give a wave, the first lady. You can clap. Also, we have a great team at the city, city engineer Nick Minnick. Wave. Hi, Nick. We think a lot. State representative and wife, Jim Pressel and Becky. I'm going to beat Nate to the punch you can't here. Thank him. Taking I mean, over. I and former that. Mayor Lee Morris and first, le former first lady. Marsha Morris. If you haven't been named by Tom, raise your hand. He'll get to you. Just a sec. I'm sure there's a role that he can acknowledge you for. Hey, all right. So, Mayor Dermody, um, it was, I don't know, you ran for mayor for like three years, but it was a couple, I remember a year and a half, I think, before the election even happened. We met here, do you remember, over in a room over Absolutely. there? Absolutely. And you said, I'm thinking about running for mayor. And, uh, it's not a typical, typically, right, people like are like school board, mayor, state rep, state senator, governor, president, dictator of the world, kind of like, you know. So you went from a uh, school board member to state rep. Why did you want to run for mayor? <laughs> it feels like, I mean, it's a demotion. So I meant o opposite, right? I'm left-handed, so maybe I went the opposite of the way I was supposed to. But, you know... Um, Jackie and I had the opportunity to sell our business, which went from TCB to 7 OKs. Uh, we then sold it to a public company, and uh, we kind of looked and said, hey, what else can we do in our life? And I had resigned, retired from the legislature uh, 10 years, and Representative Pressel has picked up the ball and moved it well forward, and really had no intention of running for office again. And then, obviously, Mayor Milo uh, left early during her term. And uh, I just looked and said, you know, I love Laporte, which I do. And uh, I, I wasn't sure about the choices that were out there that were going to move our community forward. And uh, so I said, Jackie, remember when I said I retired uh, from politics? You know, I always remember the Speaker of the House, Brian Bosma, at the time said, you know, when difficult discussions and decisions need to be made, always keep your powder dry. And I'm sure Representative Pressel has heard that. And I didn't keep my powder dry. I said I was re retiring and I'm jumping back in. So I had to tell Jackie, hey, what if we built a new house in the city? Uh, could I take you through the ups and downs of the political world again. And she has been so gracious, so supportive, uh, and I couldn't have done it without her, and said, I believe this community is special, and I believe we can compete with the best. I'm not doing it to just be mayor. 
I'm doing it to see if we can make an impact uh, for the residents of Laporte and change the mindset that I believe was there growing up uh, of pride um, and that we can compete with the best. And so with, there's opportunity here. I believe it. Uh, I'm so excited about where our community is going because of the team that we have. And uh, as I've told the mayor of Valparaiso, and I say it to all the different communities, we're coming for you. We've got some other announcements that uh, we'll be making here throughout this year, but it couldn't have been done without people like Nick Minnick and the, the remaining portion of our department heads and the teams that do it every day. And there are frustrations. Anybody that wanted to see me out this morning at 8 o'clock, when I happened to notice the grass in downtown Laporte in our community, I lost my mind. And Jackie, unfortunately, had to get it. I started calling people. And uh, I lost my mind, started pulling weeds from 8 o'clock uh, all day. Before we knew it, we had a whole team from the street department, from private industry. I said, this is unacceptable. We are going to clean up, our, uh, clean up Laporte. The weeds are getting done, and those are the little things. But it's the mindset that we have to continue. I think we've made growths and improvements, but we're kind of on that fence to say, do we settle in, do we become complacent, or do we continue to push to that next level? And today was an example that we are not going to be complacent in the city of Laporte, and we are going to be a community that uh, competes with the best. Can I talk now? So it's kind of my show, I, I thought. I, I know, I, like five times on. Thank <laughs> you for hosting. Okay. No, I'll just, I'll just, I'll hold my questions, that's fine, you, you just didn't know. Hey, uh, so you talked about a kind of a culture of complacent, com, uh, complacency and, you know, essentially just accepting it is the way it is or not wanting to improve things or whatever. Um, and, and this idea that, you know, we're either, in a sense, we're growing or we're die, dying, you know. There, there's not a lot of cities that live in that in-between. What do you think it was about Laporte? What what bred that culture of complacency where people are just okay with okay? What do you, what do you, what do you think? I'm not sure I can answer the complacency, but I know growing up we competed. Whether it's, and I come from a sports world all my life uh, growing up, and we just started accepting. You, you saw grass coming through. It's the little things. Uh, I call it Marsha Morris Park, where we have across from the hospital on Lake Street, we have a recycling uh, dump right now that I'm very frustrated with, with panels torn half off, fences, uh, a contaminated property, the grass is all grown. Uh, that's an example that it must be okay because it's looked like this for years. Mm -hmm. And I think how can we look at everybody else and say, you better do your part clean up if we're not doing ours. And so we had to start in-house with our complacency, and I think one of the best ways to shake that up was to hire Jeff Batchelor, who I grew up with Jeff. Jeff is a competitor, was 20 years with the Department of Corrections in leadership, leadership and knew exactly what it takes every day, and that's starting to set the standard for everybody, including the city. Okay, so you're talking about the things that, again, that you, you want to maybe do, but it's not just physical things. You're also trying to shift a culture, um, you know, trying to maybe, you know, again, get get uh, everyone a little more hopeful about the future rather than, and, and then I think that's just a, a kind of a basic Rust Belt idea as well, is that, you know, so many of the cities have been dying for so long whenever you feel hope, you know, or whenever that kind of hope comes, you just wait for the next shoe to drop. So you talk a lot about what's going to happen in the future and what you guys are working on. Obviously, many of us don't know what those things are. F if you've been in LaPorte County long enough, you've heard there's exciting things coming very soon. In very little times have you seen the exciting things kind of manifest itself. Either something happens, they get, you know. So what kind of things are you working on? In, you know, is it jobs? Is it you know, bringing more jobs here? Is it making it a more pedestrian-friendly city? Like, what is it that your team's really trying to work on? Well, the first thing, and if you've looked at for the last year, it's cleaning up Laporte. And I will start with the topic of discussion for everybody during the first year was, how can we kick people out of 701 Maple, which is across the, from the YMCA? 
And, you know, you talk to officers, you, and we are, I will say this, with some of the county officers here, uh, we are a law enforcement community. We believe in order, and we want to support the people that want to be here, uh, improve their lives, and follow the rules. And we had 701 Maple where uh, in the first 265 days there were 278 police calls putting our law enforcement at risk with knives, guns, drugs, bed bugs, everything that you can think of. And we said this standard will no longer be accepted. And so we gave six months to people. Uh, Jefferson and Maple Avenue have been notorious for issues. Uh, unsafe and we want to make a walkable downtown who's going to park on Jefferson Avenue who's going to park and feel comfortable taking their family walking downtown into that area so we had to clean it up and it was difficult I mean I can't tell you how many times you look in the mirror I come home to Jackie and say look we've got problems here uh, we're affecting people's lives are they going to be homeless? And I'll tell you, Lisa Pierce-Sikowski, Center Township Trustee, I wanted to wait and introduce her with me because she was a part of that 701 Maple. Jeff Batchelor was a part of 701 Maple going above and beyond to find individuals housing that needed it, that did not deserve to have themselves or their children uh, be affected with bed bugs, uh, drugs, everything that was going in and out of that building. And I want to thank Lisa for that because she was committed day in and day night with us, uh, walking in that building uh, to make a difference. And so we started by cleaning up and setting that standard. But we also looked at, is everybody says jobs, jobs, jobs. And that's a good, great political statement. We have jobs. We have jobs everywhere in the city of Laporte. I can hire right now, I can put 1,000 people to work right now. The question, though, is will they show up day two? Will they pass a drug test? And so we have to also work at, a, as I call it, a gold star workforce. We have to find a way to start developing a gold star workforce because we're always incentivizing businesses to come here. But if we have a gold star workforce and they can increase their revenue, grow their company, Laporte's going to be the place to be. So we're working on with LEAP an idea of... Do we need a full-time workforce czar, I'll call it, mm -hmm. whatever word I'll throw it your way. It all way. depends on if they like Russia or not. Exactly. You it, so. But, you know, somebody that's focused on the IU, Purdue graduates going down, focusing, making them realize that, hey, Laporte is the place to be. Look at our natural resources. Look at our lakes. Uh, and we'll find you a place to, to work in the area. But the other part of that is, and people say we want jobs, 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 Name one place right now, if a business, a manufacturer were to come to Laporte, where they would set up shop. Not wait nine to 12 months to build a building. Where in the city of Laporte would someone set up shop? And anybody have an answer? Name one building, because there are none. I mean, for the right price, uh, we're open. Uh, OSHA would be in here, you know, and checking saying, out. I mean, if so, somebody's offering a ton of money, I mean, I would say no. So we go back to the comment of, if you build it, they will come. And we took risk. We worked with the developer. And if you look at the Thomas Rose Industrial Park, uh, we have a spec building that is in the process of going up. And the minute the building, the frames, everything were going up, the phone started to ring. And businesses were saying, what do you have? We're interested. We're interested here. Uh, we had a company from South Korea come in, a Fortune 250 company from South Korea. Uh, Laporte was the only location uh, they were looking at uh, in Indiana. They were looking in Michigan and Ohio. Uh, so we, we'll, we will have, uh, we had another company come, and we'll have an announcement here very soon about po like potential soon? use of how that soon? building. Tonight? Uh, breaking news with Nate Laux on sound off maybe in a couple weeks. But if you build it, they will come. And that showed everybody we have to compete. We have to take some risks. And uh, it's starting to pay off. And it won't be the last spec building that you see in our community. 
All right, well, we're going to take a break from this conversation while you guys text your questions in. Again, if you have a question for Mayor Dermody, you're welcome to text us at 209-690-8057. But we're going to take this really quick break and play a game because I, I like to play games here. Um, and so the, the, the winner of this game gets $25 to, to Starbucks, okay? So your Frappuccinos, it's getting colder and things like that. You can get those. Um, and we're going to play this game, and it's about Laporte history, all right? Um, I call it, uh, hopefully I've got it up there. Oops. Can you put it up the, it was in row, but hold on. We'll get it in just a second. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I was waiting for it in the back. That's funny. <laughs> so this is a, a game I call Bella Oneis. Uh It's a game, if you win, you get this $25 gift card to Starbucks. There is a little bit of a hitch, though, and I will tell you that in a second. All right? This is Laporte History Trivia. I need a contestant, and I'm going to pick a contestant that it's the closest. Who has the closest birthday to today? All right. Do we have anybody born in... June. Uh oh, Kristen. When's your hey? When's your birthday, Kristen? June twenty fifth. Is anybody before June twenty fifth? Oh, Becky was getting up. I'm like Becky. No. <laughs> hey, Kristen. Guess what? You're playing the game. Welcome to Bella Wanis. All, right. All right. This gift card here, which may double your student salary. All right. You can be one. Here's the hitch. Mayor Dermody has to get the answers right. So you win the gift card. You don't if he doesn't get it right. As the mayor of Laporte, I have picked easy questions for you. All right? The first question, and you can phone a friend if you need to, unless it's Lee Morris who will know all of these yes. questions. In what year was the current city hall building where your office is, where you go to every day, in what year was the city hall building in Laporte constructed? So the city hall no, where I, I just I... need an answer. <laughs> My wife has her phone out and she's not yeah, Remember are, these are, eyes? Are, do you want do you want her to like Remember bleak these it? Eyes? <laughs> hey Kristen, what do you think? Oh, oh, yeah, you didn't see it. Oh, I'm slow <laughs> on the draw. All right, I'm going to give you this one because you know this one. I know you know this one. I'm going to show you it, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. 1912. How about 1912? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I've got a way for you to redeem yourself in this question. All right. All right? The, uh, I need to know, what was the original use of that building? A jail. Lee, is he right? No, he is not. No. It was a postal office in the beginning. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, I, I so hope this is using negative ads for you when, in the next you know, election. Mayor Dermody doesn't even know when the city hall was built. I'll be the mayor that knows my history. All right, here's a question for you. The Civic Auditorium was given to the city of Laporte by Maurice Fox in 1929. What, why did Maurice Fox want to give it to the city? Wow, it's been a long day. Nick Minnick, I'm calling the lifeline. Okay, okay, we got one lifeline. lifeline. Um, are you sure you want to call Nick Minnick? I do. I, I, <laughs> Nick's like, you don't, I, you really don't. Well, then Lee Morris, because... Lee Morris, Why? Yes, and it was in honor of, do you remember? His parents. Family, yes. yes. His, no, you can't be like, oh, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> we learned this in mayor school. Um, all right. You get your one day, Marsha. <laughs> you get your, all right. When the current Laporte County Courthouse was built, the clock in the tower needed winded how often? Okay, I will, I will make this question very easy for you. I will give you options, okay. okay? Twice a day, once a day, 
once a week, or it didn't uh, as it took advantage of a newly created technology by Nikola Tesla that once or that allowed it to be powered permanently. I can't. I'll do C. You are correct. All right, yes. you're still in it, Kristen. You're still in it. You're all right. You're still great in it. Great job, this. Kristen. There we go. All right, I'm going to give you another easy one. All right. Um, what year was Laporte, Indiana established as a settlement? Not as a town, as a settlement. 1832. What do you guys think? He's right, July 1832. Uh, you know what? People no are. I know. No, no, no. This is what I agree. You guys are disappointed he got it. <laughs> like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. You got it. All right. Um, Okay, here's the most important one. This is for all the marbles, for all the $25. If you get this right, if you get this right, Kristen gets Starbucks, may share it with you, probably won't. But, okay, which is the correct spelling? Laporte with a space or Laporte without a space? Well, whether correct now or I change it Monday at the council meeting, <laughs> it will be with a space. Kristen, you're loving me right now. Who prefers it without a space? It's okay. You guys are... Uh, the, the, the with a spaces were loud and rowdy. I don't blame you. Okay, I prefer it without a space, too. Here's the... Uh, Laporte City is with a space. Laporte County is without, according to official state records. Laporte County in the state records is without a space. Laporte City... It's funny, if you go to their websites, you can see the differences. Laporte City is with a space. Laporte County is not. So I have become a fan of the county. So Kristen, guess what? You're a winner tonight. Yes, Kristen. On Bella Wannis. Well, I did. No, don't. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Get your uh, fingers ready. It's time to text in all of your questions. This is uh, time if you've got it. We want Mayor Dermody to, um, again, not, did you say feel loved? Feel oh, feel the heat, yes. 219 690 8057. Whether you're in the room or not, you can, uh, if you're streaming with us, you can text us as well. Well, thank you. I, I am looking at it. All right, here's some text coming in. What do you consider to be the city's biggest challenge right now? It will always be financial. To be able to do the things that we need to do that other communities uh, already do. And here's the situation. The property tax caps, which I f fully support in the legislature, I support as a homeowner, and that the state of Indiana voters at a 70% rate uh, supported. It's forcing us to think of new ways to do things. And so I look at that as a challenge and also an opportunity. And, uh, but financially, we've got some great ideas. We have to be, because we haven't grown as a community in many years, uh, it's affected us. For example, we lose 25% of our budget each year so far whereas a growing community such as Lebanon lose $50,000 because they're growing. So when you hear me speak about annexation, when you hear uh, me discuss growth, those are the reasons why, not only to grow our community, but that is the way to help reduce what they call the circuit breaker, which is $3.6 million for the city of Laporte, and help reduce that number as we move forward into the future. All right, here's another question. Shouldn't restaurants all in Laporte all have uh, to be not just handicapped bathrooms, but wheelchair accessible bathrooms as well? I mean, of course, you always want to make uh, each business available and accessible to everyone in our community because we are a welcoming city of Laporte. The, some questions coming in about the hospital, um, the old hospital building, which I think we'll be using for uh, COVID vaccinations and everything right now, and there's a couple other things, but there is not a long-term you know, plan for that that we've heard publicly. Is there, 
is will the city take over that property eventually? Will they, you know, what's the what's going to happen to where the old hospital is right now? Well, we see, I see a, a fantastic community gathering center. We have to deal with the demolition of that uh, property. In fact, I had a fireworks company call me and said, hey, have you ever seen Las Vegas when they demo, implode a building and they get the big crowds out? They said, we think we can possibly do this. And knowing me, you, Nick, you know me now, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> that's intriguing. But what I will tell you is it's an opportunity to really make something special uh, and be a, a center part of our walkable downtown. Now, and we can get into it whenever you'd like, part of that problem, no matter what we do to develop a walkable community, is the truck traffic that is barreling down Lincoln Way. Are you, are you going to talk about a north-south corridor? I've not heard of that. But go ahead. Economic development, north-south corridor. But here's the thing. We have heard, and the people in the city of LaPorte deserve a voice as well. And dealing with the truck traffic in downtown uh, has been difficult and has been a complaint of citizens for years. Uh, we have somebody that has led the charge uh, in our, on our team, and that's the one sitting here, Nick Minnick. And I'll tell you what, Nick Minnick came back home. Nick was working in Colorado. Uh, he's been all over. He could have worked in a lot of places. He's a special individual. Uh, and he came home to make sure our community's growing. Part of that is the north-south corridor that he's led the charge on, and we're hopeful that the county still wants to pursue that and move it forward. I know it had been dead here for a little bit. We've kind of revitalized it, and it's something that has to be addressed um, because not only the development that could take along or, or could develop along the corridor, because again, Owning a manufacturing business, uh, vendors, manufacturers, they want to be close to each other and they want to be close to the highway to get on, get off, move their product. But what it can do for our downtown when we talk to our business owners would be amazing. And obviously this is a unique time, so whether you believe in the federal government, uh, sharing dollars, printing money, whatever you want to say, with local entities, uh, I'm not in the political fight. I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. What I want to know is where are the dollars, how do we compete for them, and how do we make it happen? And Representative Jim Pressel, we're so fortunate to have him as our roads chairman, which is a big position in the state of Indiana, to help guide us, support us uh, of the corridor to make it happen. But uh, So this north-south corridor, that, that again, the the... What they say is, again, it'll alleviate traffic on Lincoln Way specifically, correct? It'll provide a way of, for trucks or, or people that are just passing through, going from, you know, maybe South Bend to Valpo or so, something. They'll be able to bypass the city or at least a portion of it. Because by the map that I've seen, it, it goes south to 35, correct? And then it goes north to 35, if you're going through the city, though, you'll have to come back down to Lincoln Way again, won't you? Well, here's the thing that we don't talk, at least we're not to the point where we've discussed a lot, is the state of Indiana, the more highways that they can turn over to local entities, the better off they are. They're happy. And one of the points we want to do with the corridor is we also want to have Lincoln Way relinquished back to the city of LaPorte, meaning we are in control of it. And what the state of Indiana does, Carmel was kind of a unique situation, but they relinquished their main thoroughfare, or one of them, back to Carmel and paid um, $80 million or more to do that for years. So what Nick has been doing in the process has been working with the state of Indiana to say, we want to relinquish. We want to control Lincoln Way so we can say trucks, Unless your local delivery downtown, you have to find an alternative route. The issue with that is the state of Indiana will not do that yet until we have a viable route for trucks to travel now. So there's a lot of areas that we have to work on, but that's part of something like this. All right. Uh, what is the plan or process to help get the community members that want to help clean up the city more involved? 
Boy, I'll tell you what, though, that's music to our ears. Jeff Batchelor, code enforcement, uh, helping clean up. Uh, he's going to be coming out with some other programs. We had the Take Five where we offered kind of cool T-shirts for people that were cleaning up with their families. We'll have some opportunities, but contact me, text me, message me at 363-7293 or on Facebook or City of LaPorte. We would love for the volunteers to come out and help clean up. That's really your cell phone too, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I text him. And I have an orange back. It, it, there's not, Just not, as an FYI. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so here's a question. I'd like to thank him for developing uh, the Rural King in the old Kmart uh, site, but uh, I, I'd also like to know what plans for that area near Kroger. So probably Newport Landing. What plans for Newport Landing? Yeah, what, what, what is being planned over in that Kroger area, Newport Landing area? So our goal is to possibly have a grocer in that land. Uh, Bert Cook from Leap has a specific plan of what we want to attract, including restaurants or gathering spots like that. Uh, we have Doc's Smokehouse coming across the street from Culver's, uh, which is more of a sit-down, higher-dollar type of rib Type dine, diner. They have a lot of whiskey too. Yes, and you know, but we expect some more announcements with the banks coming. Uh, we also received a grant from the health. Wait, wait, please explain the banks because every time you oh, say that, I'm, I'm like Horizon Bank. They're here. The already. banks is the Flaherty and Collins project. Uh, we actually will have 75 apartments done by end of November. We already have a waiting list of 80, which is great news. People want to be in Laporte. And, uh, again, that's going to be a special place. So we're going to continue to develop that. We have a Clear Lake Trail, thanks to the Healthcare Foundation and Maria Fruth. I'll tell you what, we haven't done enough as a city to really thank them publicly for all the efforts. And Jane Plants, thank you, thank you, thank you. The Healthcare Foundation is amazing. And here's the funny thing, and, and I will say this was my dealing but the Healthcare Foundation, the, I think the largest or one of the largest grants we've ever received, $2.2 million to do the uh, Clear Lake Trail for walking and biking. We have the banks, the Flaherty Collins apartment complex, and then we have the absolute worst road in Laporte, or one of them, which is Truesdale Avenue, that cuts right through there. So Maria and I were talking as this pursuit, and I said, Maria, why don't you put in your letter that the city has to fix and pave Truesdale Avenue to get this grant? And Nick agrees. I mean, he's been a promoter of getting it to Truesdale. And so we got the letter, and we're going to have to scramble, and I understand that. But it was our doing that we, Truesdale Avenue, uh, our goal is, our goal, a roundabout. Shake your head, yes. Are you, you going to do another roundabout? Because I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I've heard some people don't love it. Who loves round? I love roundabouts. Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine with roundabouts. I'm married to a European, so I mean, it's nobody has died from my a roundabout. Kid, my kids are half roundabout, but there are some people here though um, that don't love the roundabout. So where are you putting my roundabout at? Well, we will have it there, right by the banks, maybe. It's a nice, easy roundabout. Take your time, Jackie. Do you love roundabouts? She loves them. Jim Pressel does. The dog bone is excellent out there, by the way. Great job. So is it? Oh, I, I tell you, I love it. You just got to take it slow. That's it. Just take life slow there as you come around. But, uh, no, we have a lot of development coming. We'd also like to see some facilities such as a YMCA just north of the Dunes facility. We've got a nice piece of land there. Um, and for those of you that were at the concert last night with other 2,500 friends and family members, amazing look and view out on Clear Lake. So we've got some work to do, but it's a great place to be, and uh, it's going to be fun. We've got your questions still coming in. Hey, why are some trains allowed to sit on the tracks for hours? I'm not sure I've seen that in the city of Laporte. I've seen it down by Union Mills uh, in that area, and we try to work with Norfolk Southern and others uh, to keep the trains moving and uh, we'll continue to do so. Right, if you have a question, again, if you're streaming with us or here with us in person, you could text 
8057. And for those that are here, we are putting uh, freshly baked cookies on your table. Um, and you can enjoy them like I did the uh, cookie dough before they were cooked. So, all right, here, here's a good question. Any updates on the drainage problem on Fieldstone Drive? You know, when the mayor moves into the neighborhood, the problem for all the other neighbors, they go to the bottom of the list. Yeah. But, no, all joking aside, and I appreciate that, uh, yes, we are working with the school corporation. Uh, we have some houses that uh, have unfortunately for years dealt with drainage issues, and our goal is to get that repaired, I would say, in the year, one to two years by the time all the paperwork, and I will tell you this, if I can jot slightly off, to do work as government, it will challenge you mentally. It's, uh, when we talk about a project, people say, hey, Rural King wants to come here. Great, sign them up tomorrow, we'll break ground. The process is grueling. And I'll tell you what, when we have a projects meeting every Friday with Nick Minnick, Bert Cook, Tom Casey, our city planner, uh, a variety of people, all the things that these individuals have to do and walk through, work through, is a process. And I give our team credit for being able to do that. But uh, yes, the drainage issue uh, will be fixed. It's embarrassing that homeowners have had to live with that situation uh, for some time, but I think we will have it repaired very soon. And you are, the city is aware of the issue as well. So, you, yeah, exactly. 100%. All right. Um, here's a question about the tax caps you talked about earlier. Why support tax caps that put a higher burden on commercial and industrial properties? Well, because before there was no limit. So, again, with Governor Daniels saying residential at 1% and others at 2 and 3, that cap is still better than what people would be paying or have been paying uh, in the future. Here's a question you'll enjoy probably more than most. What was your best pitch while a slicer baseball player? We'll always go with the fastball. Mm, you were a pitcher? I was. Were you any good? I you know, I got better with age. I just say, I don't see your name anywhere for baseball. I see your name as the mayor, so I think you're probably doing a better job there. All right, uh, the house is uh, being taken down, and in the way they were taken down, make it hard for anyone or anything to be done with these empty lots. Is there a plan in place that the city has to make those into, let's say, a garden or community space? You know, what, what is those plans? Because a lot of times they're not huge, right? Uh, do you want the neighbors to buy them? Are you planning on using them for other things? What, what are you going to do there? Well, and some of these have been sitting on a list for years and were very unsafe and had to be down. We had people walking in them, uh, drug use going on. And so we had to get them down for the safety of the community. And we're actually working with realtors uh, on a couple properties. We want to get property back into private developers' hands to put housing on or whatever can happen there as quick as possible. We do not want to hold on to property. You see the Don George property. We're trying to turn that into a private developer, uh, mm -hmm. turn it over into private development. And uh, we've gotten a lot of complaints about the roof. Uh, and, and I will tell you this. This is on me, and it's my responsibility. But I'm telling you, last October, I would drive, and I'd drive up and down checking things out in Pine Lake, and I noticed Don George and maybe a rock-sized hole. I swore I only saw a rock-sized uh, size hole in the roof. Driving up and down for months, started hearing all these calls and complaints that, oh, you want everybody else to deal with code enforcement? Why don't you? And I was like, That was me. Yeah, well, yeah, you were part of that, and yeah. so I was I, like, I really "What's was. the big deal?" It was like a rock-sized hole, and I drive by there one day, and it was like a crater. It was like the whole roof was basically gone, and I said, "What happened?" Or I missed this. So we're getting that into the hands of a developer. Uh, the roof can't be repaired, or at least in a way that we could do it. And but what a great opportunity to have something there that will overlook Lily Lake and uh, be a nice gathering spot. Are you expecting any, any announcements to happen in Newport Landing this summer or this, you know, before this fall or anything for new developments happening in that area? 
Your dead this year, yes. This year, at some point, yeah. Yes. What is it going to be? This year, yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, we want to clean up Laporte. How do we do this humanely and with an eye to the people who are going to be affected, especially kids who might be being evicted and destabilized? Well, obviously, we've already gone through this with 701 Maple. And I will tell you what, we have a school system that cares. When we talk about 701 Maple and having kids go to different elementary schools where the principals have outfits washed, ready to go for these kids when they come in the door that are carrying bed bugs, that have issues or wearing the same clothes, may not have bathed. The school prepared outfits every day. And, and it's amazing how our school system has gone above and beyond for some of these children that are going there. Humanely, we're trying to, the inhumane thing would have been to leave these people living in this environment. Yeah, I mean, explain to people how bad some of this was. It took weeks and weeks to clean this up, correct? Oh, uh, Carrie Campbell, she sprayed down for her company, did an unbelievable job. Worst place you've ever seen inside? Oh, wow. Gut-wrenching is a great so way. So how do they get that bad, then? Talking to police, uh, law enforcement individuals that have been around, this has been going on for 26 years. One person has said 26 years. We have the bank and the receivers that are representing the bank have said from Miami to Cleveland, they've seen bad places before, and they thought this place in Cleveland was the worst until they came to 701 Maple in LaPorte, Indiana. Not something to be proud of. I was going to say, are you more proud of that or Bella Gunness being the most famous thing that's from LaPorte? I mean, but it is, all those great things. It is uh, a difficult thing to witness firsthand. Yeah, and, and I, I, I really appreciated that question because, again, I know you and, and Lisa and Ed Seal and a couple other people, when you were trying to find places for people to stay and things like that, um, you know, again, I, I know that group all personally and with, you know, through our work here at the PAC Center in State Street, but um, it is hard to find more places. That's why I was a little, um, I, was, I was happy to hear that there might be a buyer for 71 Maple, correct? And they will hopefully go back to affordable housing. Is that the goal? Correct. That's the goal. Clean it up. The, the individual that's under contract or corporation also built the Lowe's building. And I'm really excited to talk about or to see what they're going to do with the upstairs. They have interest in housing. For There's a little don't taste. Know, Lowe's is not like your hardware store Lowe's. It's across from uh, Asian Fusion, that yes. area there. So That says Lowe's on it. I know, but nobody reads that. I mean, come on. Who knows where Lowe's is? Thank you. Everyone that's like over 90. <laughs> but They shopped at Lowe's. Stop it. But... You know, having a, a retail space on the main floor with some potential housing upstairs with a deck uh, could be really neat. And then again, 701 Maple, the goal being the first floor be cleaned up, prepared. That'll take three months. Then move to the second floor the next uh, 90 days. And then the third floor the next 90 days uh, to make it presentable and a humane living condition. Knock down... 705, which is the house next door, maybe for some parking, but uh, we are definitely no different than any other community, state in the nation, are in a housing crunch of all types, high-end, middle-income, low-income, affordable, and that's something we want to do with Maple and Jefferson because Maple and Jefferson Avenue, if you did not realize this, has the highest or lowest census track in our entire county, not Michigan City. Some people say Kingsford Heights, but the highest need, uh, lowest income in our entire county. And we need to get landlords that don't want to follow the rules and turn apartments into slums. We have to get those out of those individuals' hands and turn it into, have an opportunity here to turn it into affordable home ownership where the incentive is to keep the property clean and up to date.
Mr. Mayor, oh, this is a good one. Um, have you previously endorsed political candidates in other races? Absolutely. And if so, which you have now admitted, are you willing to endorse a candidate in another party if you believe that candidate is best qualified for the job? Would you endorse uh, somebody from another party? You know, going into it early on, that's a no-no in politics. Yeah. But you get to the point where you say, you know, I'm a different politician as a mayor than I was in the legislature. And the worst case that happens to me now, because you hear, and the one thing that never works is, well, I'll just vote you out. I'll vote you out. The worst thing that happens to me if I get voted out, Jackie and I go to a beach, enjoy life, and say we gave it a try. So don't use that as your option. But we have some, uh, Laura Cutler's on our city council. Why do I care if she's a D and an R? I don't care. If she's in it for the city and doing what's best, I support her. And I think we've just gotten too polarized with the far right and the far left. Nothing gets done. And I will always support a guy like Jim Pressel. He is in it for the right reasons. He's making a difference. And at the state level, which is ugly, nasty, and I will not go back, uh, but I'll support him to go back. Uh, yeah. yeah, have you know, fun, Jim. <laughs> Sounds great. We have got to do something to get young people involved, fresh ideas, running for office. We tried to do that with the city council, uh, and I think we have an unbelievable council, an unbelievable clerk treasurer uh, who are in it for the right reasons. But when you start getting above that level and the nastiness, uh, no one's perfect here. Uh, I'll give you all my faults. Uh, you can go up to the courthouse. You know, it's always fun when you're in the legislature. You can always find the opposite party, Republicans and Democrats, always looking to find out what you did wrong or this fault here or this so they can send a flyer, a mailer uh, that will hopefully sway people. But you know what? It's about looking people in the eye, knocking door to door, and your history of work. And... Uh, that's why I always, and, and I'm a Facebooker to try to update people, but the personal attacks that people say, and it's fine, they can say what they want about me, but these young people, why would someone get involved to put them themselves through it? We can disagree. Here's my cell phone, 363-7293. Call me direct and tell me what you have to say. Uh, we can talk about it. But, uh, yeah, I will endorse who I think are in it for the right reasons. And uh, we've got a great council that hopefully will continue to run uh, so, and continue so, to move forward. I, I'm, I'm still a little confused. Are you saying, yes, you would theoretically? I don't think anybody's I thought I you said yes. Oh, well, no, you said lots. but um, I said yes. 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 Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Just want to get a firm commitment for you for my negative campaigning ads that I'm preparing. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. I mean, we've got a my negative uh, campaign ads. I'm not sharing those with you yet. We've got a sheriff's race. Ron Heeg is a nice man. He's in my Republican Party. I grew up with Duke Ott. I know Duke Ott. I tore Duke Ott up in adult basketball every time I played him. Hey, wait, wait, wait. But Al, yes or no? Okay, I didn't. But am I supposed to automatically stop talking to somebody or visiting with people because they're in the opposite party? We've got we want more good quality candidates and it shouldn't be just based on an R or a D. Yeah. And what is a sheriff? Okay, let's get going here. What is a sheriff? What do you care if a sheriff is a Republican or Democrat anyway? You care about that they keep you safe in your home. Jim Pressel, agree or disagree? He's a Republican. Be very careful. Okay. He's in that legislator that you just demonized. Thank you. Uh, that'll be a mailer. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Pressel was at an event. Oh, I, I, Jim, we know who that mailer is going to come from, too, by the way, in your party. Um, how about the roads? There are still a few roads that are tearing up my tires. Some sidewalks at Fox and Alexander Street are also crumbling. Yes. Do something. Absolutely. I, added I did added that part. But. All right. So let's talk. The wheel tax. We generate about $500,000 from the wheel tax, plus a little bit of money that we get for roads. To repave a lane mile, 
one mile lane mile. I'm looking for my teacher. It's a million dollars. We get 500000 to pave, to repave, repave, to a new pavement. It's a million dollars. So you can see the issue right now. We have to, and one thing Nick Minnick and other people have done a great job of, is wherever they can find matching money, so whether they're federal dollars, 80-20, 80% federal, 20% local, or the community crossings at the state level that, thanks to Representative Pressel here, is 50-50 match, we are maximizing every penny that we can to get as many roads done as possible. And we have to have a street team that can also then fill in where we can't repave and unfortunately fill potholes and do it right. You, I put out on a video a couple weeks ago, we have a total patch machine that allows you to put hot tar basically with stone and fill the potholes. It's an inexpensive way to fill these potholes and it was the first time in nine years that anybody's ever been trained on the equipment. We started and the hoses have been on wrong for eight years. So I flew in a guy, we flew in to train, and I love our team, it's not their fault. But you gotta do it the right way. We have to start using our vendors that we're buying from to get with our street department. We will be there. And I think we're up to, since 2015, since Nick put in a pacer uh, highway program to start paving, uh, we're 60% of the roads that have been uh, worked, and no longer are we just asking council people what roads do you want paved? And just going worst first. Is that really Be what they did? I think they did for I the most part. That, Council people, hey, me. I want this road done or that road done. And now we have to keep good roads good versus letting them go bad because it costs more to let them go bad and then redo. It's much less to focus on the good roads and keeping them good. So we will get there. But understand, when we get money from the Healthcare Foundation or we get money from different places or in our budget, we can't say, don't do a Clear Lake Loop, we're gonna pave the roads. Yeah. That's not how it works. We get $500,000 in wheel tax. We have some federal or state money through a formula, and that's it. So we've gotta maximize and we've done a good job, but our roads can be better, and we will get there. All right, let's get to some more questions. The number, if you are watching us live right now, is 219-690-8057. Applause on the great work done on the trail slash walkway and amenities around Stone Lake. The utilization is fantastic. No question there, just Thank praise. Thank you. Thank you to our team, and more to come. I told you this was going to be like, they're going to eat you alive. And everyone's like, oh, way to go, Tom. You haven't asked them to yeah, ask no. any questions. Where will Anything the, is on the table, no, by the way. No, these are the people sending the questions. Anything is on the table. Where will the banks be? Is it in process? Now, see, you thought. What bank is he talking about? Wells Fargo? You were thinking. I saw Claire it. Dane Collins, if you look north in Newport Landing, north of Tractor Supply, uh, you can see construction uh, going on daily. In fact, it was funny. I got a call a few weeks ago. I shared this with our department heads. And it, who has seen the construction happening at the banks? I had a guy call and say, you know, I've been watching this for three or four months, and I've not seen any development. It's like, okay, you got bigger problems <laughs> than not understanding the banks because every day you can see progress. Yeah. Yeah, I know it is. So... All right, uh, here's a question from somebody here that texted me in this. I just want you to be clear, this is how this works. Since COVID is becoming more manageable for gatherings to happen, what is the plan to get the community gathering to create a more close-knit community? Are there any events planned? This is a great time to talk about Lake Fest. Absolutely. First, we brought back the 4th of July parade. And 4th of July parade, right? And thank you to Kiwanis for stepping up and making it happen. I mean, this is a special event. I think everybody loves our parade. Uh, we are the capital uh, for the day in the state of Indiana, and uh, it's gonna be fantastic. Lake Fest is something that I've talked about 
uh, before taking over office that we have to show our natural resources, our lakes, our amenities, and really promote them. And so we are having the last week of weekend of July from Thursday evening to Sunday a lake fest. And I can I give away some details? Yes. My Who, wife is yes. the first lady's on the committee, and yes. I don't know. They've kept me out of You're it. You're the mayor. What are they going to do, fire you? But, but I will tell you this. You know, we have different organizations that are taking on roles and events so the city doesn't have to do it. We also are looking at you know, Latin Day on Sunday. We have to include the Hispanic population in our community and make them feel welcome. So on Sunday, it will be Latin Day. Uh, we also have a- This coming Sunday or? Uh, as I'm talking about Lake Fest. Oh, I'm like, when? So on Sunday, we'll have, you know, Latin Day. But Lake Fest is going to be amazing. Uh, Pearl Jam is stretching me out a little bit, so it may not be this <laughs> year. But, uh, we're excited about it. We also have other downtown events at the Stitch that you'll be able to come out, have a drink, something to eat, hear some music, and bring everybody together. Um, here's a question. How is the city uh, doing more to get more people vaccinated? Well, I think we've done a very good job to promote opportunities to be vaccinated. I don't see this as a political issue. Uh, I've had friends that uh, have really struggled when they had COVID. And for those that want to receive their vaccine, we just want to make sure that there's availability. And it's amazing. You have people that just didn't want to go on the commute, didn't want to go on the computer, have to sign up. But the minute I would personally call them and say, hey, I can get you a vaccine right now, be it CVS, or I'm sorry, at Walgreens, or at the county, or at Health Link in 10 minutes, you're in and out of there, uh, it happens. And so we'll continue to promote it uh, and provide as many opportunities as possible. But Health Link, county government, and Walgreens, who am I missing, have been amazing at providing options for our residents. All right, um, what is the real unemployment rate in Laporte? It's a percentage, and again, it travels west. They take like the real percentage of Lake to Porter and then adjust to Laporte. I'm not sure. I mean, it could be probably less than 2% if people would work every day and go to work because the jobs are there. So, so how, how are, because again, I know that one of the goals is to attract more, you know, commercial, build, uh, industrial kind of employers and things like that as well. But what do you tell them, A, when unemployment is low or, un, you know, when we have a lot of people in the workforce already. So if they need more people, where are these people going to come from? Regionally, and we have to work regionally. We have to help Valpo. Valpo helps us. Michigan City working together. We've talked, we've brought people uh, from Michigan City, worked with them over to Laporte to fill manufacturing jobs because many of the jobs in Michigan City are retail, lower wage retail opportunities. So, you know, we are bringing them to Laporte to provide uh, better wages. The other part of the workforce person that I think we need to have is, again, going back then to recruiting Purdue, IU, I say Valpo because Mr. Minnick is here, but these different uh, universities and say, Laporte is the place to be. We have this company that needs 20 engineers, 20 master's engineers, and uh, here, here, here's what we are and here's who we are. Uh, a question here. This is a little bit different, but again, I think they, they'd like to get your opinion on this. How do you feel about saying the Pledge of Allegiance in schools? I love the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe we should be able to do it. Um, we want to, uh, sorry, uh, the park trails have been an incredible addition to the city. What are the future plans um, and additions that are, you know, in the plans for Laporte? Clear Lake Trail, as I mentioned. Uh, what is, so you, there's already a trail going around Clear Lake. What does the new trail do? This will be a new trail that connects all, to make the complete circle okay. around Clear Lake for walkers, bikers. We're also continuing the great work on the Chessie Trail. And then the other part that the Healthcare Foundation has supported that I am excited about 
being a former Kessling Comet and walking to school every day is the 18th Street Greenway so that from I Street to Kingsbury Ave, there will be a walkway for bikers, walkers on a sidewalk, sidewalk and then from Kingsbury Ave south to Southmore, if I said that right, I mean north to Southmore. I was just kids, nodding my head because I'm like, I, I so don't know So kids do roads. not have to walk on the street to get to school, and it will be a great place for bikers and walkers and also be able to join the trail. That's great. Uh, it is, uh, I know in some of the, you know, we take our kids to school in the morning to Kessling, and I, I saw more than a few times when snow was real bad and people couldn't get out and do their sidewalks that there were a lot of kids and there's buses going by. There's, you know, walking on 18th Street there to get to school. So um, And it will be done this year, that, even before the school year begins. Because I remember when I used to walk 10 miles from my house to Kessling in the snow. with my. You know what we were talking about the other day that we used to put old bread bags, remember, on our feet. You probably didn't because you're I was going to say, you, 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 you are looking at me as if I was in that. I actually did, but I wanted to make you feel Who old. did I that, by the way? And with, yeah, my mom yeah there's a few us. of us. I was like, wow. What year did you graduate high school? 84. Guess what year I was born? 86. No, 81. Come on. Um, here's a question. How do you feel about some smaller houses going up on the empty lots to help with the housing shortage in Laporte, maybe even tiny homes? I believe row housing and different close housing, there's going to be some opportunities. As you talk about um, announcements, hopefully we'll be able, be able to announce some space where we'll be able to put smaller housing to, uh, closely together uh, to provide opportunities for more people. Here's a question about the mask mandate. Is there currently a mask mandate in the port in the city? If not, will you let the businesses uh, know to take their mask signs down? So explain to people, you know, again, where the mask mandate is now, how it works out in practice and things like that. There is not a mask mandate in the city of Laporte. Each individual business can decide what's best for them. Here's another funny story. So, again, if, if, if uh, I guess a, I a won't store, say no, 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 okay. I think it's important because, again, if a store does want you to wear it, you need to wear it, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So I was ready. I'm... And I've done what I've done, and I think followed the rules. So I was ready to say, City Hall, it's to people's choice. We're going to open. We opened last Tuesday or this Tuesday, this past right? Tuesday. I was vaccinated. If someone wants to get sick, they're on their own. But I said, <laughs> department heads, I said, hey, everybody, I'm ready just to, uh, when we open, leave it to each individual choice, uh, whether a person wears a mask or not. And our department heads and our city council, I thought I had mutiny on my hands. They said, we don't know the individuals that are walking in. You know, we want to protect. I've got an older grandmother at home who's compromised potentially. We want masks. And so because of that and honoring the council and the majority rules in this, and I'm not afraid to battle, but this one I said, that's fine. So in the city hall, People come to do business, they wear a mask, at least right. till the end of June. All right. If you have a question, we still have some time, 209-690-8057, whether you're here with us in person or online, any question, and I'll ask. Here's a here's a here's maybe the best question of the night so far because it's such an easy answer. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Not for me. No, it doesn't. We don't put fruit on pizza. No. All right, Mayor Dermody, I, I want to talk a little bit about Newport Lane, or sorry, uh, about the North-South Corridor a little bit, because I, I know this is a topic that's going to come up often in the next couple years for you. This isn't anything that you're going to decide and it gets taken away. How do you as a leader, though, deal with, there are people, some people that even support you in general, but don't like this idea. How do you deal with the tension of that to make it seem to make them understand you're still their mayor even when you don't always do what they want, right? Absolutely. And so how do you live with that tension? There's always going to be nobody agrees with everything that you do and you understand that if you if you do what you think is right and you can look at yourself in the mirror and put your head down on the pillow at night, it's okay. I mean, we don't agree 
every night what we have for dinner as a family. I'm sure you all don't either. But what I find is even the county, people that are living in the county, even though we don't represent them, deserve a face-to-face -face and deserve to look Nick Minnick in the eyes. He was out last night meeting with groups that don't live in the city to explain to them our process, our thoughts, and our reasoning why. They deserve to hear from us. The county, this is a county project. We're helping lead that. We, just, we haven't heard much from the county on it lately. They're still evaluating or whatever they might be doing. But uh, if we don't do this, the city of LaPorte and the residents of our community will suffer because we see, even strictly just from the, the work that's been done to show in 10 years, you could sit at a light a couple cycles coming into LaPorte. The truck traffic will be increasing. The cars will be increasing. And we have to look at options. People talk about Kokomo. I have legislator friends that were involved directly in the Kokomo. It's worked. People have survived. Businesses have grown. Half of the businesses have increased their business with the, you know, the corridor has been developed. So we have a great opportunity. I've always heard Laporte, we always miss out. We never, you know, whether it was the gaming when the city of Laporte voted against gaming and now Michigan City gets all the money. These opportunities come before us and we always say no. It's hard to look at people in the eyes and say, this could potentially affect your life. That is not easy, and we don't go home smiles and happiness, but what we have to do, leadership is about looking at the bigger picture and making sometimes a difficult decision that you think is best for the majority of people. So you have been in politics since, well, I don't even know when you ran, when did you run for school board for the first time? Boy, 20... I mean, you were 20. And by the way, Richard Luger and I, I think we're the only two people in the state of Indiana that have survived school board to run for other offices. True story. Oh, you're kidding. I have, I'll tell you what, anybody that runs for school board and is on that board gets major support because that's a no win. There are no perks. There's no happiness. I remember the first day I was on office or in office, I got a call from friends that were serious that said, our kids, our twins were split up at Kingsbury, and I want them in the same class together and fix it now. And then mad because we, because we couldn't. So school board people, they are truly lovers of the community and trying to make the school system better. But So I was probably 2002. Okay. Do you realize what you've done tonight? You have now sufficiently convinced no one to run for state rep or school board. You're doing a great job getting young people involved here. <laughs> All right. So then you've been, 2006, I think, is when you first ran for state rep. Correct. You won. Um, actually flipped that district, I think, correct? No, Mary Kay oh. Budak, okay. uh, who was a 26-year veteran uh, of the legislature. And I'll tell you what, there were times, there were times Mary Kay Budak and I, you know, demonized looking at each other <laughs> I, but once you get in the business of serving the, in the legislature i have major respect for anybody that can serve that many years uh and give of their time but uh yeah and it started and i think you know people ask about term limits and i served on ways and means had the opportunity to serve on ways and means for the state of indiana and I get it, and I don't think people should be there for 20 and 30 years, but there is term limits every election. We have to get people to get out and vote. And the other part of that is, I worry from a fiscal perspective, because I served on Ways and Means, and it takes you six years before you know which end is up on a financial side. You don't even know where the bathrooms are the first two years. So to say term limits, and you remove the history of people that know about how to do budgets, where the dollars goes, you better be willing to re live with that result of a bunch of new people that walk in there to try to help move the country or state or local community forward. So kind of sticking with that a little bit, so from 2006 um, to now, 
How have you seen politics changing? I would say you had supporters that said, I support you eight out of 10, on eight out of 10 items. So I support you. Now it's, wow, you don't agree with me on two items, so you're out. Bring the next person in. And just the nastiness. And it's hard. We got to get back to talking, working together. Congress is a perfect example of nothing being done where I think they should be paid on commission. And I've talked about this. You don't get paid at Congress unless you do something. That's the only way you get paid. Um, it's just gotten nasty. They're truly on both sides of the aisle, and I'll go back to, from a legislator perspective. The Republican and Democrats, for the majority of them, people are down there to do the right thing. You may not agree, but they're trying to do the right thing. And they're good people, and they're giving up of their home life, their family life, their business life to be down there and serve. And I remember our business suffered 25% on year one learning the legislature and came back and we lost a lot of business because of it. So, and I certainly didn't do it for the $19,000 a year minus the rent, minus food, because everybody talks about lobbyist dinners. All you have to do is go out to one three hour lobbyist dinner you and then it's like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's, it's painful. I'll bring my Jimmy John's back to the hotel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, okay, politics, I think all of us feel like it's changing. I think some of us are trying to figure out how to articulate that change. Again, because it is, seems like almost like a cultural change and a shift in how we deal with each other. Um, not even just what we believe, but how we learn to deal with each other. Uh, you know, now that you're back in Laporte, and you are an executive in your politics, you know, uh, an executive politician now, not part of the legislative branch, which again, when you're in the Indiana State Legislature, you're one of what, 100 or so? 150. Um, and now you're the executive. How has that shift gone from being the one in charge, essentially, to being one of 150? Do you like this better than being in the legislature? I love it. I absolutely love it. The hard part is, as a leader, Sometimes you have to make, and I'll say in private business, sometimes you have to make a difficult decision. You have to remember in government, you have to talk to a council, you have to include your team. Uh, you just don't want to be that person that makes all the decisions uh, by yourself. So you have to make sure you take a breath, say, hey, there's a process here. Sometimes it's hard. It can take a long time in government to get things done. And you just want to short circuit that system Say, let's happen. Let's make it happen right now. We need to demo this. Demo it right now. Demo this building. It's a, it's a concern, but there's processes. Or Nick Minnick, go pave this road right now. I don't care what it costs. Or Have you, you said know, that? Uh, oh, I've said a lot to Nick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we got to do this, that, or the other. And uh, sometimes it can take a long time. So here's a question for you. How do you envision Laporte in the next 10 to 15 years? What's the culture slash infrastructure, et cetera, of Laporte? What does Laporte as a city look like in 10 to 15 years? Taking advantage of our natural resources, an outdoor type place that people can come enjoy, raise a family, and, and work in the area, make a good living to uh, improve their lives and that a place that our children that we educate will go off to school and give them a reason to come home. Um, here's a question for you. What are you learning right now? From the mayor? Yeah, just as a, as a, in life. What are you learning right now? That sometimes uh, I have to take a breath, and I have to, I can't bulldog, or it can't be just about what Tom Dermody wants. And I have to take a breath and slow down and make sure that our department heads, while being pushed, understand if each of our departments do one thing to make an impact and improve the lives of our residents, we multiply that times the 11 departments. Look what we've accomplished in the year. So 
you've got 11 departments, and they're all doing their own thing, correct? Um, is there anything that you think the city needs right now, either departmentally or just as a key position that the city doesn't have? So we have a human resources person that doubles as a IT person. We have an engineer, Nick Minnick, that doubles as a purchasing agent. We don't have a workforce person. And there's one other thing that you talk about. And if you flip it into a company and say we're a $10, $20 million company, who would think that a $10 or $20 million company doesn't have an IT person mm -hmm. in-house? With multiple buildings, right? That I can, with multiple buildings that I can raise my hand and say, I got a problem, because I say that a lot, and I have nowhere to turn. Uh, or why aren't we looking at the purchase of salt? And here's one, for example. Why am I going to Nick Minnick to say, what's the best way to get a contract for salt? He, he needs to build things. He needs to develop things for our roads, for the future of Laporte, and he's working on salt. So I said, so I started calling... INDOT, Indiana Department of Transportation, and said, you have a salt dome. LaPorte County, you have a salt dome. We have a salt dome that's falling apart. Salt is oozing out onto the streets, and it costs a million dollars to replace. Why is the state requiring us to buy so much salt, sit on it? Why can't I charge me a little more? We'll go take a dump truck during the winter, pick it up a mile and a half away at the state, bill me for it, and then I don't have to worry to spend a million dollars of taxpayer money on a new salt dome. Did they say no? They were like, oh, well, no one's really asked us that question. How would we make it work? And, I, and the funny thing, the Department of Administration that puts this program together, the person was our chief of staff when I was in the legislature, so I can have more direct conversation. I said, we need to rethink of this versus building a new salt dome so we can have three salt domes within two miles of each other. Let's think of it differently. And so we're working on that. Uh, if we didn't have to spend the million dollars there, we could put it towards park equipment. We have great parks and trails, and we're using trucks that I was driving as a junior in college. Yet we want parks to be maintained. You know, we've got a lot of needs and a lot of work, and we will get there, but uh, we have to be very smart with our money and challenge where are we spending it. Well, I hope that works out. That makes sense. All right, here's a, another question. As someone that works in the healthcare field locally, could there be a list of some sort given or a strong community contact that could help us connect people to more resources in the city for the healthcare offices to help people with those needs to be local needs to be local community members that are in need of food, housing, mental health support, and et cetera? Absolutely. I think that you know, our trustee system, Lisa, Center Township, does a great job helping with that. Uh, you know, many cities, Fishers, Noblesvilles, are either looking at or offering a health department. We're not prepared to do that. We don't have the funding to do that. We have to pay our people well. And I want to mention this, our street department, our parks department, those are people that need to be paid a good wage that... They could leave tomorrow. We need to keep these people, and they, des they deserve, we want quality people. We have to pay them to keep them. But uh, we have a LaPorte County Health Department that can do the work. I've been so impressed how they've handled the vaccination. Let's do what we can to support them and see what they can do to help those individuals that need mental health uh, physical support, whatever it might be, and we just had a call today, somebody that needed mental health support. The problem is everybody wants an in-house facility, but as I've been reminded by many professionals, unless they're prepared to go, it's not going to work. All right, just a couple more minutes in this episode of Discussion Over Dinner. we got a couple questions here. What do you wish people at the State House knew about local government? That the incidents that happen at a local level that for communities that aren't responsible with the tax dollars of their people doesn't mean everybody is irresponsible. And keep that in mind. And one of the issues in education, and I 
believe, and I made some votes that were very difficult, but when we talk about public education, you're one of 150, as you say. We have great schools in LaPorte, John Glenn, South Central, but when you look at Gary, Fort Wayne, um, Indianapolis, there are issues. Money isn't going to solve those problems in those areas. And I wish they didn't have to paint with broad strokes to address the problems that, how, or education problems that are in Gary, are in Fort Wayne, are in Indianapolis, and that affect our community schools. And uh, I think that's an area that could be really improved upon. If, when you, you took a lot of votes as, as a legislator for 10 years, if you could have one vote back, what would it be? You know, probably the most difficult one that I struggled with were the vouchers, private school vouchers. Pushing kids in Gary, Fort Wayne again, going back to Indianapolis, forcing them to be in failing schools and not giving them the opportunity to go somewhere in their families and how it, it was across the board versus stinks working specifically on those schools that struggled. It was a hard vote for me to do it statewide and I struggled with a long time. How did you vote? I voted to support the vouchers uh, for those areas that needed the help. All right, well, we have had a great episode. I'm gonna give you the final word. What do you want our listeners to know? And I hope you can break some news for something tonight. I love this job. I have appreciated, appreciated all of your support. I don't expect you to agree, agree with everything that I've done, but know that myself, our team, my wife, the first lady, Jim Pressel, Lisa Piercekowski, everybody here that's running for office are trying to do the right things overall. And our departments, Nick Minnick could leave the city of LaPorte right now and go double his income right now in the private market, today. They're here Nick. because they care. They're that. here because they love this community and want to make a difference. Help us be part of the solution. I'm always available, 363-7293. Call me, text me, Tom Dermody, Facebook page, City of LaPorte Facebook page. Stay in touch. It's not easy, but we're going to make LaPorte a special place, so thank you for tonight. And I want to thank you so much for being here as well. You heard the breaking news. There is a, a new 7-Eleven coming to town, as Mayor Dermody said. And two houses being removed. And two houses, yeah. So lots of breaking news here. Hey, I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, I want to thank our volunteers, especially those that prepared the food. Thank you so much. We are glad to get back to these events. We will put a new calendar out for that, uh, and, and we'll have some more this summer and things like that as we uh, believe that this is one of the most important things we could do is sit across the table from others, uh, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, or somewhere in between, uh, that we can learn from each other, that we can listen to each other, and hopefully create a better community around us. Again, thank you so much for streaming with us. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time. Have a great night. Discussion over dinner. This is our home.